Well, the king understands the importance of walking the path of reconciliation. That's how Governor General Mary Simon summed up her meeting with King Charles III. AFN National Chief Roseanne Archibald was also at that historic meeting in this building right behind us. And she's our guest here on Your Morning. Welcome back to the show. Good to have you here. Happy to be here. And I'm glad you made it over because you were stuck walking in that town for Yeah, I'm a bit wet and sweaty. But I'm glad that you're here. We're glad to have you. Listen, you were at this historic meeting with King Charles III. Uh, he made it a prize priority to meet with you and the other national indigenous leaders. What did you discuss? We talked about where we could find some common kinds of issues to work on together. Obviously, the impact of colonization on First Nations people has been devastating. It's been destructive. And we want to have that conversation at some point in a fulsome way. We had originally 45 minutes with him, and so we really wanted to let him know that this meeting is about evolving that relationship with the Crown in a positive way, with the new king, with the new path. In May of last year, during that visit to Canada, he was not yet the king, then the, then the Duke of uh, Cornwall, but he did acknowledge what he called, quote, Canada's darker and more difficult aspects of the past, talking about colonization, talking about residential schools, and he said he was leaving with a heavy heart. So it's a year later, he is now the king. What did you ask for, and was there an apology given by the Crown for residential schools? The hardest issue that I raised with the king was missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls and gender diverse people. It's an ongoing genocide in Canada and I don't think anybody even recognizes that as in terms of ordinary Canadians. What was his reaction when you brought it up? Well, I brought it up in relation to um, him being the new commissioner in chief of the RCMP, asking for him to acknowledge and support those calls for justice that were made through the inquiry. So it was really um, a short part of our meeting. Most of the meeting was really about how do we start to work together. This is a new king. We want to walk what we call the healing path forward. I mean, there's just been so much devastation, as I said. And I really found him to be empathetic, to be sincere and authentic in his approach. And I said that when I met him in May. Mm -hmm. It was in May when he was the prince mm -hmm. that I asked him for the apology. And so there now he's the king. It's a totally different role. So we really need to set that path together. So many of the issues that we're dealing with deal with sort of start and end with the crown. And whether however many hundreds of years ago that was, he is now the crown. So that meeting was very important. Uh, the statement from the National Indigenous Organizations that came out yesterday said that this was, quote, a new relationship. What does that mean, a new relationship, and, and how new can it be if we're still waiting for apologies or rescinding the doctrine of, the, of discovery? It feels the same. Well, it's actually coming full circle, and I said this to His Majesty, that our people, our ancestors, Indigenous peoples, were warm, welcoming, generous, and gracious. And that treaty-making process was the nation-to-nation -nation relationship that we had and still have today. And so we have to come back to that place of respect, that place where we are working together as opposed to what we have been through together, which is a devastating, destructive course of colonization. It's been fascinating to watch the NIO almost form their own diplomatic relationships, aside from government, with the king. And I'll be interested to see how that plays out within government and you know within decisions that are being made in the road. I want to remind our viewers at home that we are next to another live uh, broadcast that's happening right now. So if you hear some of the voices that's what you're hearing. My last question to you uh, is one that stays with me a lot. I did an interview with a residential school survivor, Edmund Metatawabin, and he said to me, I will tell you my story, but first tell me what you'll do with it. The king has come to Canada. He has heard the stories from residential school survivors. He's heard from leaders like yourself about what is happening in Indigenous people and Indigenous communities. What is he going to do with those stories? When I met him as prince, he said to me it's very clear that the honor of the crown has not always been upheld by successor governments. And what I'm hoping is that as we develop this relationship with him, that we can go back to those words when he was the prince and make them an action. Like, what are we actually going to do together as opposed to talking and having meetings? I think the meeting is almost like the first step, you know, on a long journey with the king. Well, we don't know how, how many years he'll be a king, but it's a long journey with the crown. It goes back hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, and it will go forward hundreds and hundreds of years. 
Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.